Bible says, for a man wants to die, and after this comes the judgment. You're here today to come to court, to be judged in a temporal judgment. There's coming a day in which God will judge you with an eternal judgment, a very just judgment, an irreversible judgment. And no slick lawyer can get you off on judgment day. There'll be no continuing your case on judgment day. There'll be no justifying yourself with flimsy excuses on judgment day. We stand before the just God of all the universe. We know your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. There'll be no escaping. That's why you ought to get right with God. You ought to plead your case before God now before judgment day happens. Before that day comes, that great terrible day for sinners, and forsake your sins. The Bible says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. You ought to come and reason together with God. What's that? We're in America, man. Public property. Of course we're allowed to do this. Read the speech. I need to be arrested for yeah, preaching my religion. Yeah, you need to be arrested. For what? Because you're what stupid. Legal, man? What do you mean? Because people like it. You're stupid. Because people like it. You're stupid. Look at you. You're stupid. Like I care what you think about me. Being stupid is illegal. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is stupid. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. To those who are being saved, it's the power of God and salvation. Yes, the power of God and salvation. I come where the preaching is needed. God, don't you do it, man? Yes, he tells me to do it, man. Of course he wants me to do it. He tells me to preach the gospel to all creation. Amen. Yeah, tell me to keep it in the building. You're amening with a cigarette in your hand, you're in big trouble. Yeah, you ought to put those cigarettes down. You're slow as suicide. You're killing yourself. Excuse me, sir? Can I be up there? This is public property, sir. Why can't no, this I is courthouse property. Public, All right, public property. courthouse. I've got to get down on the sidewalk. Can't do it up here. No, we so don't. Are you telling me if I don't move here, I'm going to get arrested? No, sir, get the camera off me now. No, sir. It's freedom of the press. Sir, get the camera off me. That's no, freedom sir. of the press, sir. Are you? Are you I could, sir, get your camera off me. Or freedom I'm of the press, escape. sir. What's your yeah. name? Sir, you're not going to touch my name? camera. I don't get to know your name? No. You're not going to touch why? my camera, sir. Lieutenant, I, why don't I get you to know your name? You have no right name? speech, free sir, religion, public property. Let me tell you something. You have no right to take pictures of me. If you're in my in my situation here, my lawyer's manager, sir. The law of press release. Public right. property, sir. Sir, I'm asking you nicely. You have to get a press release no. from all of us for us to be on that camera. I'm telling you nicely. No. Then you're, then you're not a man of God. I am a man of God. I'm preaching no, the gospel. Not. No, you're not. Says who? Because I'm asking you nicely to leave. Because you asked me nicely to do something, I should do it? No, I'm asking you again. No. No, this is public property, sir. Speaking free speech, free, free religion. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I get your, getting y'all arrested. Okay, get the cops here. I'll talk to them. Do that, sir. I do it all the time. Yes. Yes, do, do that. You know, uh, this God is angry with the wicked every day, and then he's saying on the back. It's the Bible verse. You know, hey, God's going to forgive me for my sins. No, if you don't repent, he won't. I've already repented. I've already, are you still doing it? Then you haven't repented. Right. Repent means you stop it. You, you don't read the Bible very good. I sure do. do. Matthew 5, we're, 48. We're all going to have to, to, to report to God when we get up to the I'm telling you to get ready now. Because I'm, that I'm day ready. is too late. I'm ready. Oh, you're you not. Know, so your attitude funny. towards the preaching tells you know, me you're, you're not ready, here, sir. They're out here preaching, but they're also filming. Right. Yes, I'm allowed to film. Freedom of God, press. God's recording. You know the laws of America? So, which one are you doing? Are you preaching? All three. Or... No. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of press. Just I'm an American citizen. No, I'm not going anywhere. You can't tell me to leave, sir. It's an unlawful yes, command. Yes, I can. Unlawful command, sir. Show me where it says it. Freedom of speech. It's the foundation of the Constitution, sir. You don't know this stuff? You work in a courthouse I'm and you don't know this stuff? This is the courthouse. It's not public property. It's owned by the public, sir. No, public it's not. funds it's pay for this. Owned by the court. Public funds sir. pay for your job no, and for this building. It sure does. No, it does. Who are you paid by? I get paid by a different company. Okay. That you have nothing to do with. Well, they get the paid public. by. Venue right here, no. public property. Public funds paid for this. You are wasting your time. You're right. You're a hypocrite. I'm not going anywhere. You're a hypocrite. No, sir. I'm not a hypocrite. I preach the sir, gospel. I'm telling you one more to. time. You don't take that camera off of me. I'm well confiscated. No, you will not. Don't touch my camera. Don't stop me. You're don't touch my camera. My equipment, sir. You're don't you touch my camera. You'll be in big Call trouble the police. My no. No. Call I'm the police. Times. Quit taking You're pictures. in a Lieutenant, public area. Call I'm the police. My lawyer has advised me to film all of the 
telling me I'm a hypocrite with that filthy word coming out of your mouth? Hey, hey, I didn't say I wasn't a hypocrite. Oh, so you are a hypocrite? Yeah. So you have a beam in your eye trying to expect out of my eyes. That way it works? No. Yeah, you have a beam I know in your eyes, sir. I know where I'm going. Where are you going? I'm going to hell. You are? Yeah. Well, why are you going well, to I hell? I don't want to change my ways. Why not? Because I've already lived that life. Well, it's, look, 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 the good life? Yes. And you turn back to your shit? Yes. And the dog talk, turn it back to the vomit? And a pig to wallowing in the mud? You need to pray for me. You need to fear you God. To pray for your own you need to fear God and depart from iniquity, sir. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You need to give up your sin before it's too late for you, sir. I won't get it to give. No, you don't have to give it to me. Give it to God. Give it up. Surrender it. Put it aside. Put it away. Oh, this is preaching right, sir. You can like it because you're a sinner. The Bible commands you to repent. The Bible commands you to give up your sin. You may be here today going through your temporal court with temporal solutions to the problem you may have, but there's coming a courtroom in which God will judge in righteousness, in which God will judge you according to his holy and perfect law. And this God, this judge, sees your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. He's all the evidence he needs. All the evidence he needs on Judgment Day. He doesn't need any kind of videotaping. He doesn't need any witnesses. He's got all the evidence he needs. He sees everything. Nothing is hidden from his sight. And you have to give account for every idle word. Every time you've had a filthy word come out of your mouth. Every time you blaspheme God's name. You have to give account of it. Right. Every time you fornicated with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you're going to have to give an account of it. Right. Every time you've done drugs or dealt drugs, you have to give an account of it. So right. Every time you've gotten drunk, you're going to have to give an account. And the Bible makes it clear. Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Right. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor drunkards, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves will inherit the kingdom of God. If you're still engaged in these things, no matter how much you get off in court today, or no matter how much your crimes are in court today, you still have to answer to God. You still have to answer to God. And God's going to call you to give an account. And this God says, for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. You know, you ought to do you to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way or her way. The unrighteous man or his thoughts let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. See, God is willing to have mercy upon you. He's willing to pardon you of your sins. Not like some earthly judge, but because of what Christ did for you on the cross. Jesus Christ and his bloody sacrifice. Not a pretty sight, but he shed his blood for sinners. Not so you can remain a sinner and keep on going on in your fornication and drunkenness and lying and stealing, whatever your crimes may be before God, but so you can forsake those things. Right. Give them up altogether. The Bible says, draw near to God and he, he will, will draw, draw near, near to you. you. Cleanse your hands, Double minded. Sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn, and mourn, and weep. And weep. Let your laughter turn to mourning, your joy to gloom. gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and lift you up. Many of you aren't willing to humble yourself. Not willing to give up your sin. You're not willing to repent, which means to change your mind about your sin. Jesus said it like this in John 5, 14. Go and sin no more unless a worse thing happen to you. That's what you ought to do. You know, give up your cigarette smoking. You know, give up your drug use. You know, give up your drunkenness. You've got to give up your fornication, your lies. Those things are going to cost you your soul. Those things are going to earn you a place in the everlasting lake of fire. And those are the things that Christ died to free you from. 1 John 3 says, Christ was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Christ was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil in your life. 
Is it that's why Christ came. Not so he can oh, shed his blood. You have an eternal count of, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. So you can give it up. If you're coming to God and say, God, I'm sorry for fornicating my girl from last night, but you're planning in your head to do it again, God's going to say, no, I won't forgive you. Because God only forgives and truly repent. God's not a fool. You don't take him for a fool, do you? That's an earthly judge. He's infinite in wisdom, infinite in knowledge, and he's omnipresent. Wherever you are, he sees you in your, in your bedroom at night when you're clicking on your pornography. He knows about it. He knows about the secret things you do. So the Bible says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. You want to know what your purpose in life is? You want to know what your all is? Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment. Including every secret thing, whether good or evil. See, the judge, the corpus is here today. Brings in the judgment things they know about. And because they're finite in their wisdom, they're finite in their presence as cops and judges, they can only bring certain things in the judgment. But God is infinite in presence, infinite in knowledge, and he's going to bring everything. That'll put some fear in your hearts. Think about your thought life for the last week alone, let alone your whole life. The last week, your thought life, if that was put on a DVD, and put into play before your grandmother and your grandfather and your friends and family, what would you do? You'd probably run out of there in shame. But God's seen it all, friends. All of it. Not just one lie. Not just a half truth or a fib. All of your sin. Think about it, friends. If you sin just once a day, over 20 years, that's over 7,000 sins against God. Over 7,000 sins in 20 years. If you were brought before the earthly judge here today with 7,000 charges, you'd be in big trouble. They'd throw you in jail and throw away the key. But the God of all the universe sees all your crimes. It's going to bring him to judgment, friends. And that ought to cause you to give up your sin. That ought to cause you to seek the only way for forgiveness through Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross. Your only hope. Not in praying a prayer. Not in saying, by asking Jesus into your heart. But in coming to him, surrendering your sin, and trusting in the one who shed his blood for you. The Bible says Jesus Christ was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement for your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, be you can be, be healed. All we like sheep have gone That's astray. Great. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord gave him up for our sin. Yes. The Bible says, yes. when we are still with that strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will someone die. But for a good man, someone might perhaps dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, Christ died for the ungodly. If you're here today and you're ungodly, you're qualified. If you're here today and you admit that you're a sinner, you're qualified. Christ died for you. But you've got to give up your sin. You can't continue in your sin. You can't have your sin and have my Savior. Because he's a Savior from sin. Not a Savior in sin, but a Savior from sin. And he can deliver you today. Because when Christ saves, He doesn't just save from the penalty of sin, which is hell. He doesn't just save from the guilt of sin, the shame of sin, the feelings you have when you sin. But He saves from the power of sin, that you can walk in holiness before Him. First Peter 1 says, As obedient children, not conforming yourself to your former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as He who calls you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. In all your conduct. He commands you to obey Him. And if you love Jesus Christ, you will obey Him. You don't just give Him lip service. You give Him heart service. You give Him all. Because He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your life. He's worthy of your obedience. He's worthy of your all. 1 John 3, 18 through 19 says this. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth 
and shall assure our hearts before him. You know how you know you're of the truth? You know how you can have assurance of salvation? Is that you're loving God in deed and in truth. Not in word and tongue only. Matthew 15, Jesus said, these people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He calls them hypocrites. And that word means pretenders. Those who call themselves Christians, but don't live the Christian life. They don't keep God's commandments. And it's great danger for such people, friends. I'm here to warn you. Flee the wrath that's to come. Flee the wrath. Because when Christ returns with mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these he shall punish with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. That's what Christ is going to do when he comes back. He's not going to be a baby in a manger anymore. Christ is not going to be a suffering servant anymore when he returns. Christ will be a conquering king when he returns. And the Bible says to stomp out the grapes of wrath. Don't be one of those ones. Don't be one of those ones. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. If you're living a wicked life, God is angry with you. He's not happy with you. He's not your friend. He's not your buddy. He's not your homeboy if you're living in sin. He tells you to stop sinning. And those who are Christ's friends will stop sinning. They will give it up. They'll give up their lying. They'll give up their stealing. That's right. Walk according to the Spirit, you will not fulfill us in the flesh. You'll give up your drunkenness. You'll give up your sex outside of marriage. You'll give up your porn watching if you're a Christian. You'll give up your homosexuality if you're a Christian. Oh, yes, you will. Homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God, evil sidelines. They won't inherit the kingdom of God. Right. Now become a well. former homosexual, a former sodomite to inherit the kingdom of God, a former drunkard a former fornicator to inherit the kingdom of God. But if you stay a fornicator and die a fornicator, you'll go to hell fire as a fornicator. You know, fornicators get STDs, syphilis, rats, herpes, HIV, AIDS, but the worst STD a fornicator can get is sexually transmitted damnation. Going to hell for your sexual immorality. That's the worst thing that happen to any fornicator. Stay with the drunkard. Drunkards get DUIs, they get DWIs, they're killing their brain cells, they're destroying their liver, they're destroying their kidney, the whole body is screaming at them, stop being a drunkard. But the worst thing after a drunkard is they stumble right into hell. That's the worst thing. That's not what I want for you, it's not what Christ wants for you. Christ shed his blood for sinners, he died for the ungodly. And God takes no delight in the death of the wicked but rather an eternal end. God wants all to be saved. All to come to a knowledge of the truth. All to come to repentance. All to give up their sin and trust in Christ. That's your choice. God won't force you. God won't make you to repent of your sins. God won't make you give up your sins and follow him. That's your choice. That's a desire for you. That's why we're here today. To preach the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ to you. That you might be delivered from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. And that's God's hope for you. That's God's will for your life. Don't let anyone tell you. Don't let the devil tell you you have to stay a sinner. Don't let anyone tell you you have to stay in a place you're in. God makes a way out of sin every time. God can make a way out of your drunkenness. God can make a way out of your fornication. And I'm telling you, friends, I was just in court earlier today with my friend. I saw all the people come up, and they'd say, well, judge, I know I got this ticket, but because of this and that. And the earthly judge, the finite earthly judge, saw through the flimsy excuses and gave them what they needed. And you think, when you stand before God and says, God, you know, I couldn't help it. It's the way I was born, the situation I was born into. My parents weren't good parents. They're not good enough excuses, friends. God commands you to repent, personally. He commands you to be born again of the Holy Spirit. Except a man be born again 
Take a nod, hair of God. Kingdom, you're welcome. Except the man be born again. Take a nod, hair of the kingdom of God. He will not see the kingdom of God. But God's tried to reach out to you today in the midst of your situation while you have a courtroom on your mind. You have that courtroom on your mind. Get on your mind the eternal courtroom. The courtroom of God's justice. Not man's justice. And oftentimes there may be injustice in man's courtroom. But in God's courtroom there is no injustice. There's no lawyers. Those things aren't needed. The only person to see is God who witnesses everything. And his testimony is sure. His testimony is true. And he calls you to repentance. To repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, as Acts 3 says. Repent and be converted. The Bible says, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end. I ask you, friends, what will the profit you if you gain all the world and lose your soul? The profit you nothing. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. What your sin will earn you is a place in the second death, which Revelation says is being cast into the lake of fire. That's what your sin job will earn you. So your sin job will earn you. You know, each of you probably have jobs. You get paid a wage for your jobs, whether it's minimum wage or $100,000 a year. You get paid a wage for your job. Well, for your sin job, your wage is hellfire. That's what you earn by your sin job. That's what you earn. You ought to quit your sin job. You ought to quit your sin job and start your holiness job. Amen. Your job that God has ordained you to be a part of. The job of knowing Him and making Him known to others. The job of walking in holiness. The job of forsaking your sin. That's where you ought to start. Ask yourself this question. You understand before God today. And He said to you, Why should I let you into my kingdom? What would your answer be? What would your answer be? Well, I'm a good person. No, you're not. No one is good in the Bible. No one is righteous. No, not one, the Bible says. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. You've all lied. And the Bible says, Every liar shall have his part in the lake of fire. Every single one. What are you going to do with that? All the liars out here. What are you going to do with that? you got to forsake your lying. you got to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ who will cleanse you of your lying. It will empower you to be honest. And he'll command you to stop being a liar. Because every liar has his part in the lake of fire. So do drunkards and fornicators and pot smokers. Yeah, such people are going to go to hell. But God is willing, God is able to forgive you. He's willing to pardon you of your sins, to cleanse you of your sins, to empower you to live holy. That's God's offer. Yeah, that's the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay. That he shed his blood for you. Sir, so you're a mocker and you're in big trouble, you mocker. I just said hallelujah. You're a mocker and you're in big trouble. Yes, you're a mocker. Now. You'll lament and mourn and weep. Let your laugh through the morning, your joy to gloom, sinner. Or you're going to enter into hell fire. You laugh about your sin now, you're going to weep and gnash about your sin later. But if you weep and mourn over your sin and forsake it and give it to Christ, the Bible says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs the kingdom of God. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. You will not despise. God does not despise those who are broken and contrite in spirit. There, he does not despise them. So if you if you're a, realize you're a sinner deserving of hell, deserving of God's judgment and God's wrath, you come before him in brokenness, forsaking your sins. He will forgive. He'll receive such a person like that. But he will not receive. That person that comes to Christ and demands forgiveness, and they deserve it. No one of none of us deserve forgiveness. None of us deserve God's grace and God's mercy. But God offers out of his great love. 
He offers us grace. He offers the pardon of sin. He offers the mercy of the cross. It's a bloody mercy, but it's the mercy He offers you. Through His sacrifice on the cross, where He's beaten and bruised and crucified for you. For you. The Bible says that for God to love the world. Christ died for the world. He didn't just die for some people, He died for all. But only those who forsake their sins, only those who give up their sins and trust in Christ and walk in holiness, only those will partake in His sacrifice. Only those will partake in the forgiveness His sacrifice affords. There's conditions for God's forgiveness. There's conditions for eternal life. And those conditions are repentance, trust in Christ, and following Him. Those are conditions. And if you're here in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're part of the Bible Belt here, and you go to church every Sunday, or maybe you go to church Sunday and Wednesday, or maybe Sunday and Sunday night and Wednesday, know this. No amount of church attendance is going to enter, give you entrance in the kingdom of God. You got to forsake your sin. You think going to a building two or three times a week is going to make you and get you into heaven? Don't be deceived, friend. You must forsake your sin. Stop being a hypocrite. You may say, "Well, I'm saved by grace." Well, the Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust right. Right. and live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. If you're one of those Christians who says, well, I can't obey God now. I can't obey God until I get to heaven. You don't have the grace of God that brings salvation according to the Bible. Not only that, but the Bible says, now by this we know that we know Christ. If we keep His commandments. He that says, I know Christ and does not keep His commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in Him. But whoever keeps His word truly, the love of God is perfected in Him. By this, we know that we are in Him. Yes. How do you know you know Christ? How do you know you're in Him? By keeping His commandments. Yes. And no amount of dressing yourself up and making yourself look pretty is going to wash away your sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away sins, friends. He's the only one God's provided that can cleanse you of your sins. He's the only one God's provided to give you eternal life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. No one comes to the Father but by Him. Not one of the ways. Not one of the truths, not one of the lives, not one of the ways to the Father. He is the way, the truth, the life. And no one, and that means no one, comes to the Father but by Him. Acts 4.12, there's no other name given under heaven by which men can be saved. But the sweet and powerful oh, and mighty name yes, of Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Amen. He died for you. Yes, no one else died for you. Muhammad didn't die for you. Right. Buddha didn't die for you. Nobody else shed their blood for sinners. And no one else's blood has the power to forgive. No one free. else's blood has the power to cleanse. But Jesus Christ, the name that's hated above all other names, yes. the name that's blasphemed millions of times every day. And he sits and listens to it and endures it and is patient with those who blaspheme his name every day. Patient with them, enduring with them, wanting them to come to repent. You know, God could have stuffed each one of us out the first time we sinned. It would have been just in doing so. Each one of us, the first time we sinned, God could have snuffed us out, cast us into hell. It would have been just in doing so. But God is patient towards you, long-suffering with you, wanting you to come to repentance, wanting you to have eternal life. But do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, 
You are treasuring up wrath for yourself in a day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each man according to his deeds. Yes, sir, my friend. Don't you hear that, friends? Don't you hear that? God is patient with you. Even as you go on your sin, your fornication, your lying, your stealing, whatever your sin may be, God's patient with you. But His patience runs out eventually. And He's going to call you to give an account of your life. Not as an earthly judge, but as an infinite judge who sees all, who knows all. Yes, sir, even the ones who shake their heads. He's going to call you to give an account too, young man. Yeah. They mock today and shake their heads today. But on judgment day, there will be no mocking. It will be a great, terrible day for sinners. But for the saints who God takes pleasure in their death, judgment day, death has lost its sting for the saints. They know God. They know to whom they belong. They know they have eternal life through Jesus Christ and His sacrifice. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So many of you have this heavy burden of sin. All your lying, your stealing, your lust, your blasphemy, your fornication, your drunkenness is upon your shoulders. And the only one can take it off of you. The only one who can relieve you from your sin burden is Jesus Christ. Nobody else can relieve you from your sin burden but Jesus Christ. Only His yoke is easy. Only His burden is light. Only He can cleanse you. Only Christ can forgive you. This judge in here may forgive you or pardon you of temporal crimes, but only the judge of the whole universe can forgive you and pardon you of your eternal crimes against Him. You need to understand, friends, when you lie to someone, you sin against God. When you lie to someone, you sin against God. And God's going to bring in the judgment, friends. Think of all the lies you've told over your life. The thousands, probably, of lies you've told over your life. And you understand before God, it's like a capital crime in God's courtroom to lie. It's a capital crime in God's courtroom to, uh, to look with lust, or to commit adultery, or to fornicate, or to get drunk. It might not be a crime here on earth to do those things, but it's a crime in God's courtroom to be a fornicator. It's a crime in God's courtroom to be a homosexual or a sodomite. It's a crime in God's courtroom to lust after somebody. It might not be a crime here on earth, but it is in God's courtroom. At His courtroom, at the end of the day, at the end of your life, is all that matters. This courtroom won't matter on that day. What will matter on that day is how you stand before God. And my question for you, friends, are you ready to meet your judge? Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to stand before God and give account of every thought, word, and deed? Every single one? You won't be able to roll your eyes at Him on Judgment Day. No rolling your eyes at God on Judgment Day. Yeah, sodomites won't inherit the kingdom of God. Homosexuals and sodomites and lesbians won't inherit the kingdom of God. They'll give an account. They'll give an account. You know, on Judgment Day, there's no more forgiveness available. It's over. There's no continuing the case. There's no continuing the case through the next month or the next week or the next year. When you stand before God on Judgment Day, that's it. All the deeds done in the body will come to fruition, will come to the light, and they'll be judged by the light. All the things done in darkness will be judged by the light. And this God, who is judge, is also executioner. And all the crimes against him, every single one, is a capital crime. But this judge is also rich in mercy, abundant in pardon, and he commands you to repent or you'll perish. The one, he was just, the perfect one, Christ Jesus died for the unjust. The Holy One died for the unholy. Yet the unholy mock him. 
The unholy mock his gospel and his sacrifice. And the unholy will give an account to the holy for rejecting his sacrifice on the cross. Repent, or you will perish. Give up your sins, or you'll go to hell. That's God's justice. Not a ticket, not a fine pay. You can't pay your way out of hell, friend. You may get a $100 fine here today. Maybe some of you are here today for, court, uh, for uh, traffic tickets. Maybe you'll be able to go to an eight-day class, eight-hour class. So it won't go on your, your insurance, it won't go on your record. But no less, friends. The only way to get your record wiped out before God is to give up your sin, to give up your rebellion, to give up your criminal activity before God and follow Him. That's the only way. In an eternal sense, your record can be wiped out, clean, slate, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he's the only one who can give you a clean slate. No judge can, no lawyer can. We implore you, friends, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Give up your sin, whatever your sin may be. Give up your lying. Give up your sex before marriage. Give up your drunkenness. Give up your porn watching. Give up your stealing. Give up your homosexuality and follow Jesus Christ. Hey guys, you're gonna have to move down to the sidewalk, all right? You're gonna have to get the police, sir. Don't touch sir. my camera. Touch touch camera. My Go get the police. There's the Go police the right there. Go get the police. Property, there he is, right there. Property. Yeah. We're not going yeah. anywhere. Not going anywhere, Lieutenant. What's that? Who are you gonna call, sir? I'm asking you to leave. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Call right. the police. I already told the guy back there to call the police. What are you waiting for? I'll talk to them. I talk to police all the time. They know my rights. You don't, and you're trying to infringe on my rights. What's your name, sir? Officer, what's your name? It is security. Right. <laughs> the sign says, all sinners who refuse to repent, that means stop your sitting, and trust in Christ, will end up in an everlasting lake of fire. That's where you end up. And if you've forsaken your sins in the past, if you used to be a Christian, and now you're going back to your sin, you're in greater danger. If you're saying you used to be a Christian, but now you've forsaken Jesus Christ, the one who died for you, you've forsaken his great love and his mercy and forgiveness, you've turned back to your sin, you're in greater danger, greater danger. For those who say they know Christ, but they're living a hypocritical life, you're in great danger, friend. Churchianity will go to hell on Judgment Day. Hypocrisy will go to hell on Judgment Day. Your church attendance will burn up like shaft on Judgment Day. But the work's done for Christ and purity in heart for His glory. Those things will go with you before God and judgment. And he will reward every man according to his deeds. And he will punish every man according to his deeds. Those who have trusted in Christ, those who are living a life of obedience to Christ, they will enter the kingdom of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But the workers of iniquity will go to hell fire. That's where the work of iniquity will go. Good message. Thank you. Isaiah 1, verse 16 says, Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as white as wool. That's the offer God has for you. That your, your crimes against him, you're lying, you're stealing, your lust, your fornication, your drunkenness. They are red like crimson, a stain upon you. But by the blood of Jesus Christ, like a bleached detergent, he can cleanse you of your sin. He can wash away your sin and treat you as if you had never sinned. Treat you like you don't deserve. As if you've been holy all your life. But if you continue in your sin, you need to be a homosexual or a drunkard or a fornicator. And you die in that state. God will give you what you deserve. And every sinner deserves hellfire. Everyone. But God is rich in mercy. He's abundant in pardon. And he offers you today eternal life. If you repent, believe, be baptized, and begin to walk in his way. He offers you eternal life. To all sinners, no matter how great your sin is, no matter how much your sin is, no matter how bad your sin is, Christ died for you. But you got to give it up, friends. You can't stay in your sin and have my Savior. He's either your Lord or He's not your Savior. If Christ isn't your Lord, if He's ruling and reigning in your life, you're being obedient to Him, then He's not your Savior. He's your judge. You're a blasphemer. You ought to watch your mouth. You're in big Filthy trouble, woman. God, sinner. You're in big trouble. Yeah. Poor you is right. You'll be poor God and pitiful will on judgment day. You on judgment day if you don't repent, sinner. Right. See the pride. Pride goes before the destruction. For all the pride fly here. I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. You're in big trouble. The first step to becoming a Christian, the first step to getting forgiveness from God is admitting you're a sinner. Realizing how wicked you are. Realizing what you deserve for your sin before God. That's the first step. If you can't start there, you have no hope. You think, well, I deserve forgiveness. I'm good enough to go to heaven. I'm okay with God. You're in big trouble. Big trouble. The Bible says that mercy and truth, atonement, that's Christ, and mercy and truth, Christ was provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. By the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. You know what we need more of in this world? More fear, fear of God. You know what we need more of in this world? More hate, more hatred of sin. You know, if you hate sin, you'll stop it. The problem with this world is too much love of sin and too much hatred for God. You ought to stop being a sin-loving God-hater and be a God-loving sin-hater. Amen. You ought to stop being a sin-loving God-hater and be a God-loving sin-hater. Many of you couldn't imagine a life without your sin because you've been doing it for so long you do it for so often. But that's what you are made for. Your conscience rejects your sin. Your conscience given to you by God accuses you every time you sin. And your conscience, every time you forsake sin, it excuses you. And so many of you have been accused by your conscience so many times, and you rejected the counsel of your conscience, which was given to you by God so many times, that you've seared your conscience. You've corrupted it. It's no longer, you can't even hear it anymore. But God's hey, going to cleanse your conscience. God hates you, dude. Think about it. He hates me? How do you know that? How do you know we're all sinners? I didn't say you're all sinners. But you're a sinner. I know that. This much I know that you are a sinner, sir, by your filthy mouth and by the things that come out of your mouth. You know, Jesus said, out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart. The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The coward, too. Yes. So what comes out of your mouth shows what kind of heart you have. If you have filthy words coming out of your mouth, you're a filthy-hearted sinner. You need to come before Christ and get cleansed of your sin. Ask Him for a new heart. You'll become born again. He'll transform you from the inside out. 
what he did for me 15 years ago. I'll have just about every other word in my mouth is a cuss word 15 years ago. Fornicator, drunkard, got in fights all the time. But Christ changed me. He transformed me. That's the hope any sinner has. The only hope a sinner has. And the same thing he did for me 15 years ago, he can do for you. He can cleanse you. He can change you. He can transform you. Become a new person. The Bible says like this. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. All has become new. But if you stay a liar and a drunkard and a fornicator and a potty mouth, you'll be in big, big trouble with God. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, let no filthy communication proceed from your mouth. James 1 says, keep a tight rein on your tongue, lest your religion be useless and worthless before God. The Bible says in James chapter 3, that from the tongue proceeds bitter and sweet water, salt water and clean water. It ought not be so. If you're a Christian, pure things come out of your mouth. Not unholy things, not impure things, but only impure things. <laughs> Revelation 22, 14 says this, Blessed are those who do the commandments of God, and they might have the right to the tree of life, and might enter through the gates into the city. But outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the idolaters, the murderers, and anyone who loves and practices the law. You don't want to be outside the city, the holy city, because outside the holy city is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Outside the holy city is outer darkness. It's not where you want to be. You don't want to end up getting what you deserve for your sins. The Bible calls hell a lake of fire, a lake of sulfur, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The fire never goes out in hell because there's always fuel there. The fuel is a sinner. The fires never go out. They can't be quenched. They can't be extinguished because God's fire and because he always has fuel there. The sinners. Don't be fuel for God's fire. Don't be the, the, the wood for God's oven where the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever before the throne of God, the Bible says. All the unpleasing things, people don't like to think about God. God's angry with the wicked every day. The Bible even says that God hates all the work of iniquity. You see what happens when God's word is preached? All the devils come out with their wicked hearts. If I wasn't out here preaching God's word, he wouldn't have said a word when he drove by. When God's word is preached, and his holy and righteous standards uplifting all the sinners who love their sin. All the filthiness and wickedness of the heart comes out. But that young man who drove by, God is pacing within. God wants him to come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance. God wants you to be born again. God sent his son to die for you. Christ shed his blood for the ungodly. That's you. We ought to stop being on God, on God. Start being godly. Start following Jesus Christ like He commands you to do. He's your only hope, friends. You're, you have no, there's no hope in your good works. There's no hope in your church, church attendance. There's no hope in going to your confession booth in a Roman Catholic church and saying your sins to a, a priest. The only hope any sinner has is a great high priest, Jesus Christ. The only hope any sinner has. We're going to command you, flee the wrath that's come. Flee it. God commands all men everywhere to repent. Because coming a day, he's going to judge the world in righteousness. In righteousness. Metro Police.
Johnson. 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 Carry on. 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 Carry on.